Good morning. Good morning to SNAP. SNAP is survivors of narcissistic and abusive personalities. You guys hear me talk about SNAP a lot. Um, our SNAPers or our SNAP clients are people who have endured abuse at the hands of narcissists, other abusive and manipulative types of personalities. Um, so we've sort of put them together in a group of narcissistic and abusive personalities. But anybody who has encountered these types, it leaves you a little bit different. It changes you permanently. And you wind up sort of a different person afterwards. So if you've experienced that, you belong here. You're in the right place. Um, sometimes it's a parent. Sometimes it's a romantic relationship. It could be an adult in your life as a child who um, bullied you or who molested you. Um, it could be a coach. It could be a minister. Um, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. And a lot of times we use romantic relationships as examples. Um, but just keep in mind that you can apply most of what we're talking about in these videos to any type of abusive relationship, including something in the workplace or at church or um, in your family. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But today we're going to talk about vultures, specifically vultures. And vultures, again, don't have to appear um, after the end of a romantic relationship. They can appear after we have just faced something or been through something um, that was difficult. So basically sort of um, these different phases that we go through, there's often a catalyst um, and we go through these transitions as we're sort of um, coming out of something stressful or difficult or surviving, say, an illness. Um, you know, it can be after divorce. It could be after college. You know, so you're maybe not quite... Um, you're, you're just graduating and still trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. So you're not quite settled um, and you're coming out of something. So that's one of the first things that we're looking for is that they present themselves um, when we are in some kind of a transition. Um, and again, we're talking about vultures here and I call them vultures. It's a pattern that I see um, where you have, uh, I have clients who are experiencing um, some sort of a change, a life change. A lot of times it has to do with cutting ties or getting away from an abusive person or abusive situation. Um, and so the vulture will appear right around that time. Um, and you might have heard me mention this before is that I, I tell people that is that, you know, the, the first person that you're dating during that time or maybe even the first couple, it's that's not going to be your person. And I'll tell you why here in a little bit. Um, and I'm not saying don't date. All right. So we'll get that straight. And um, I'm going to talk about that, too. So they do appear during transitions um, and they seem fine with our chaos. They seem fine with our dysfunction. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's get honest. All right. When you're coming out of an abusive circumstance, life's a mess. OK, and things are complicated. Things are stressful. There's lots of changes happening. And then we have, you know, kids that are trying to get reacclimated um, and, you know, you're trying to figure things out and how things are going to be. And this is when we're the most vulnerable. A lot of times is when we're in transitional phases. When you're in a transitional phase, you're sort of. Um, trying to figure out who you are again. So you're reformulating your identity. You are maybe feeling guilt and shame over things that have just happened. <clears throat> so you're in kind of a weakened state. It's a beautiful thing. It's a good thing to be in transition, but um, it leaves us sort of uncertain. We're kind of a little bit doubtful of ourselves. We're a lot doubtful. Um, money is an issue during that time, usually. Um, possibly where you're going to live even. Uh, and so you're sort of feeling less than you're feeling. Um, you're feeling sort of like, who am I and what does the future hold? You know, because that's where a lot of the anxiety comes from, is that we have 
uh, ang we're anxious over the great unknown. And so you're, you're looking for something to sort of soothe you, right? Like it would be really nice right now to feel a little bit better. Um, and you're looking for things possibly to make you feel better. And here comes a vulture, right? Um, and while we're in that transition, again, our life can be dysfunctional, it can be chaotic, there can be, you know, crisis happening a lot. And this person appears when our life is a mess, and they're perfectly fine with it. So they're fine with the mess, they're fine with the dysfunction. And instead of us going, hmm, that's strange, why would they be fine with dysfunction and chaos? Why are they cool with that? We think, oh, wow that's great that I'm not being judged. And this is a good person, right? Who's seeing through my horrific circumstances and seeing me for me and not judging me for my situation. Uh, so we often feel like we're getting rescued in a way or like, wow, this is a much needed uh, mood booster uh, right at this time. And so they will seem sometimes like too good to be true, you know, like, wow, um, she has a lot in common with me. She's been through the same things I have. Um, she's just gotten a divorce a couple years ago too. Um, and it sounds like things weren't that great. And so, um, you know, he, he must understand what I've been through. Um, they will appear as someone who has more money than you. And if you're a single mom um, who's raising, you know, several kids, um, or if you're a dad that's paying a bunch of child support, I mean, money is tight these days, guys, and people are struggling. Um, and so this person will appear as if they come from a different socioeconomic um, class even, or just someone that, that looks like, wow, I may not have to worry financially, um, or at least they seem like they have their stuff together. So they're, they kind of come like, wow, how lucky am I? Like, he's totally fine with everything that's going on with me right now. Um, he is, you know, not judging me. He's been through stuff and he's, he's got his stuff together. Um, and, you know, he took us all out for dinner the other night and the kids just really got along. So, I mean, like, he just seems like this, you know, person that God sent into your life at just the right time. And it's really sad and hard to rain on somebody's parade um, when they feel happy and excited about a new relationship. So often people will get frustrated with you sort of like, why are you dating right now? You shouldn't be dating right now. And they're judging you because you just came out of a mess. Things are still a mess and now you're dating. Well, I'm not saying don't date and, and I don't have any problem with that at all. In fact, I think it's good for us to do it, right? It's just, you gotta be very realistic and know what it is that you're looking at. Um, and then act accordingly and not live in a fantasy world or la la land or the land of make believe or the land of wishful thinking. We have to live in facts and truth. Um, and then we're safe because we, again, we know what we're looking at and we can act accordingly. Um, another way we can tell that this person might be a vulture is because things move fast. Yeah, they just, they move fast. You hit it off really well. Um, you skip right through the dating process and start hanging out. Um, they get along great with your people. You're already introducing them to some of your people. And they're saying things like, I can't believe how lucky I am to have met someone and I don't even want to date anybody else. And, you know, like sort of hinting and pressuring a little bit, uh, prodding a commitment um, and monogamy. So, yeah, I mean, really we're looking at for a healthy person with a healthy relationship it's going to take longer it's going to take longer than that um, but because we're hurting we feel empty we feel um, exhausted we feel unloved and neglected it's really nice to have someone treat us nice we haven't been treated nice in a long time just someone to be nice to us right so just the fact that the person is nice they're already winning in our book like he's so nice she's so nice it's easy to be nice guys you know it just takes some energy 
and, and basic human being stuff to be nice. Um, but because we've been deprived, that niceness, you know, basically they're throwing you a bone, but it tastes like a filet mignon because you've been neglected. So just because someone is nice does not mean that they're a good person and that they are the right person for you. Um, so they go fast, right? Things seem to go fast. Um, and then you also seem to have a lot in common, like they have a similar background to you in some way, shape or form having to do with um, it could be uh, similar childhood experiences. It could be similar um, in terms of they've j they've been through a rough situation, too, and they made it out. They seem like they're on the other side of it. Um, but the reason that they're not judging you a lot of times comes in the form of me, too. And we think we're even luckier now because this person really gets us. Um, yeah. Uh, and then something that will happen is once you commit and you, you know, decide to be monogamous and committed with this person, things start to change. And by this time, though, you're in love. And so it's harder for you to... Um, I don't know. It's hard for you to see the person clearly. Also, you just got out of something and now you've entered into something else. So the idea of ending this seems like a failure on the heels of a failure. And so we're less likely to confront the issue because we feel bad that we're having to end something again or that things are going wrong again. So we will lie to ourselves like it's not that bad. You know, at least they're not doing this or at least they're not doing that. Or we explain away bad behaviors. And here we are doing the same things we were doing before. So, yeah. As soon as you commit, things will start to change and it'll just be little things at first. Um, they start acting in ways that are confusing to you. And then when you start to get nervous or worried, like, hey, I haven't heard from you in a few days, then they act like you're being um, controlling or possessive. And now here we go. You know, you're being mischaracterized already. Um, you start to find things with them that remind you even of the way you used to be treated and but then you think this can't possibly be so once again we're talking ourselves out of our own perceptions um okay so moving forward how to how to avoid these people um how to deal with it uh, if it happens well think about dating as dating there's <laughs> People don't date anymore. I mean, part of it is that it's expensive, but also we tend to just sort of like, we hit it off and we're like, yeah, let's hang out. And then the next thing you know, you're not actually dating. You are coming over to each other's house, which means you're seeing the person, you know, or you're allowing that person into your life in an intimate way. If they're sitting on your couch and petting your dog, you know? Um, so we want to actually date and not integrate, okay? Date, not integrate. We date, which means you go out and you meet them out and you have a coffee or you walk in the park. Um, you go to the mall and walk around. You don't have to go out to dinner and it doesn't have to be expensive every time, but you go and you meet the person. You have a plan. Would you like to go out with me on Friday? Yes, I would. And then Friday rolls around and they meet you at the exact time you've agreed upon at the place that you agreed to meet. OK, so things are consistent. You make a plan. They follow the plan. Um, and part of this has to do with you being able to observe the person's behaviors, patterns and patterns of behavior over time um, and, and to be able to see how they act when they are angry, when they don't get their way. Do you feel like they're constantly changing the plan? Do you feel like that they're constantly late with loads of excuses? Um, if you don't give the person the room and the space to, to be who they truly are, you're not going to see them in their true nature until you've already committed and you guys moved in together and you got a dog and you had a baby, right? So you've got to give that person space and I call it sort of observe them in their own habitat, you know, let them be naturally themselves um, at a distance and date over the course of time you can get to know them. So you want to go slow. That's the next thing. You know, and that sucks because we want some relief. Um, we also feel like we've lost a lot of time. 
And so to, to go fast is like, wow, I don't have to, you know, kill all this time or waste all this time, like, you know, dating a bunch of different people to find the right one. Like I've already found this person and, and, you know, you just kind of want it to go faster because more is better. Right. And it just, it feels good to be around them, especially once you've fallen in love with them. Um, but you want to slow down, slow down, way down. Like if you think of how slow you want to go, go like way slower than that. Um, you also want to listen for uh, victim narratives that have large missing pieces. <laughs> so it's, you know, yeah, we got a divorce. Um, you know, things weren't good and, and you know, we just grew apart. Um, and then he's talking about how, you know, he went to therapy and things like that. And you're like, well, why did you need to go to therapy if it was all cool and everything was fine? And the reason you're not married anymore is just because you grew apart. You know, so you're looking for like these generic reasons for things that leave missing information, ambiguous or vague type information. Now, I'm not saying that people should be sharing intimate details about their life really soon. Um, that can be a red flag, too. You know, I'm talking about a natural growth over time when it's appropriate. That's when we disclose things. But if this person's already, you know, telling you all about their victimhood and they have large missing pieces of information or it's just kind of murky and it's hard to understand, but then you regard that as, well, I want to give them privacy, you know, and then they'll tell me when they're ready. And then you start asking questions and then the story kind of changes a little bit. And now you're confused because I thought you said it was amicable. So that's weird, right? Um, so you're looking for inconsistencies in their narratives um, and things that just kind of don't make sense. Um, I've got a couple of clients that do not let people get by with that. And I wish I had more of that in my blood, but I've got a couple of clients that the second things get a little fishy or, or suspicious or inconsistent, they confront the person right then and they're like, well, wait, I thought you said, you know, um, well, that doesn't make sense because you told me two weeks ago, you know, can, can you explain that? And they'll just go right for it. But a lot of us have more of that, um, fear of conflict and we'll just sort of shy away from con confrontation and then tell ourselves a story in our head that makes that okay. Um, oh, and then another thing we can look for is they claim to have like a spiritual journey of some sort, like, I don't know, it doesn't have to be spiritual, it could be therapeutic. Um, in other words, they claim to have done work on themselves. Like they went to a retreat or they read this book or they went to therapy or they meet with their minister or, um, you know, and they'll even suggest a book to you. So you think, wow, not only do we have all these things in common, but they also seek to get better. And wow, I read that book, too. Um, and but then later on, you see that they're not living by those ideals. So let's see. Uh, you read The Power of Vulnerability, too, by Brene Brown. I love that book, right? But he never is vulnerable, or she never gets vulnerable. And see, you see that the patterns of behavior don't match what's coming out, what they're saying, right? So what they're doing doesn't match what they claim. Um, and so we're looking for those sorts of things, too. So beware of vultures. Vultures will swoop in when you're vulnerable, when you're just coming out of something, um, when you're in a transition. They appear too good to be true. They are very nice, and it feels so good to be treated nice. They move really fast in the relationship. They have a lot in common with you. They start their victim narrative rather early. There's large chunks of information missing from their narrative. Um, and ways that we can be ready for this is dating versus integrating, also going slower. We want to, um, you know, listen for the spiritual journey and then see if the person lives in that spiritual way in their day-to-day -day life. Hope this has been helpful, and I hope you guys have a great day. Please share if you feel comfortable sharing your vulture story. Lots of people have them. Um, or if you have any questions about vultures, just pop a comment down, and I will be happy to answer. All right, you guys have a good day. Bye.